This little street here is where you're gonna find the most action on this whole island. Literally inside of a cloud right now. Look closely, there's a little guy here. I originally thought this had something to do with the new year, but it's actually a funeral parade. Hello everyone from Fujian. I've been in China for five years and I am finally, finally, finally visiting Fujian for the very first time. So excited to be here. I actually started this journey in the city of Rayan, where I had an event for work. Then I headed south to a tiny town right at the foot of Taimu Mountain in Fujian province. I crammed a lot of action into my two-day New Year's break. And I'm gonna take you guys along for all of it, starting from the old streets of Rayan. <laughs> My actual work assignment here doesn't start until tomorrow, but we came here today because it's a three and a half hour long train ride, so didn't really want to get up at like five in the morning for that. So since we got here so early, my colleague and I are just strolling around in this little market. We wandered the streets, watched traditional craftsmen in action, appreciated local delicacies, and most importantly of all, we were educated about internet scams. Yes, you heard that right. If you're wondering what all the commotion is behind me, it's not some special event or some like free stuff out here for everyone. It's literally telling people to watch out for scams online because someone in this neighborhood just got scammed out of 149,000 RMB. How do I know that? You might wonder because they put this tragedy out on the street for everyone to see it. <laughs> it's December 29th and they're still milking the last bit out of the teats of Christmas spirit. See there's a Santa up here on the roof and there are a few shops with Christmas trees. The Christmas decorations are an interesting contrast to the perpetual fall that this place seems to be trapped in. Not that that's a bad thing by any means, I love fall. And up next, I'll be going somewhere even warmer than this. All right, everyone, the train is here, saying goodbye to lovely Ray Ann, and I'm headed to Fujian for the very first time ever. And for those of you who are inevitably going to ask, I have not abandoned my house in rural China. I still live there. It's just that I travel a lot for work, and I'm going to continue traveling a lot for work indefinitely. So anytime I go on a trip for work to somewhere even remotely interesting, I will do my best to make a vlog there. So exciting! Two days to explore this fresh new territory that I've never been in before. Last day of 2023, spending it in Fujian. So here I am outside of the Fuding train station and I'm about to go for a little stroll and explore some of the villages around here. And then I'm gonna head to an area called Taimu Mountain and do some hiking because there's some very interesting rock formations on there. And who doesn't love rocks? So that's my plans for the last day of 2023. Let's go. Even though I took a wrong turn and spent a while puttering around on what feels like a set from a Star Trek movie, I did eventually reach the random village I was trying to get to, and I even got a house tour from a friendly local resident. Nice little view out the window while you're cooking. This is your house's fish or not? It's our house's fish. It's a big fish. It's This place has a collective fish pond. For the most part here, everyone has a concrete house, one of these like five or six story colossus houses. But if you have a sharp eye, sometimes you can find some pieces of old architecture hidden here in the trees being consumed by mother nature. I guess they didn't bother demolishing this because everybody wants an ocean view in these new houses, so they just kind of left it. Let's take a look. You 
gotta have a sharp eyeball for details. Look closely. There's a little guy here. Look at this little guy. The wooden houses are pretty much not being lived in anymore. So if we look down below the floor of these houses is literally dirt. There's a calendar on this wall from 2005. So if you came to this place 20 years ago or maybe even not quite that long ago, there would have been people actually living in this house, but now it's just being used as a miscellaneous storage spot. I absolutely love the attention to detail in the design of these old houses, from the little wood carvings to the different designs of the windows. You can see that window over there is actually in the C character design, which is used to represent when someone gets married. We saw that earlier in that lady's house. There's just so many like teeny little design elements that they've integrated into those older houses that just take this from a regular house to being a home for someone. So I hope that we can have more of these traditional design elements in the future with the concrete houses because again, these houses are so much more comfortable to live in than their wooden counterparts, but some of them are just lacking that cute vibe, you know? Chinese style rice cake. <laughs> As you can see, this is the place where they eat a lot of seafood. All right, everyone, I'm at the foot of the mountain, about to go and conquer this beast. You have to take a bus partway up the mountain to reach the hiking trail, and to get to that bus, you have to pass through a series of colorful and noisy distractions to test your dedication to climbing the mountain. And I am very dedicated. No amount of firecrackers, puppies, or weird musical instruments will deter me from the task at hand. On to the bus we go. Literally inside of a cloud right now. They've given names to a lot of these rocks, and this one here is actually called Hippo Roaring to the Sky. And if you're confused about where the hippo is, they even give you a little illustration here. This rock here is called the Cloud Marking Stone, which is a very elegant name, but I would like to suggest an alternate name. Fat horse with a fat face and a stubby tail because I saw it the moment I looked at this rock and I cannot unsee it. Aside from looking at the scenery, one of my favorite things to do when hiking in China is take a look at all the random stuff that people are selling. Obviously they have water and snacks and those run of the mill things, but then most of these vendors have a little stack of random gifts as well. And it's not like these gifts are related to this mountain in any way, shape or form. It's completely random stuff. And I just love to look, browse around, see what the selection offers. As much as Chinese people love drinking tea, I actually don't normally see tea sets up on any mountains anywhere. The reason why there's so many of them here is because this place is known for its white tea. If you don't know much about tea, just think of it as another strain of green tea. So that's why there's so many tea stands.
inching my way up this little staircase between these massive rock faces to get to a temple. Of course there's a temple up here, as with most major mountains in China and many small mountains as well. And look at all the boulders that have gotten stuck in between these rock faces over the years. returned from the cloud mountain and I'm now out here on the street and I had no idea the nightlife was so popping in this tiny little town. Of course, this market has all of the usual night market specialties like things on sticks, fried things on sticks, and the occasional surprise for the more adventurous palate such as grilled durian with cheese. And tonight there is a special bonus item, fireworks. Everyone is stocking up for midnight which is just a couple of hours away. All right, everyone, it is 11.54. We are moments away from 2024. People are already setting off fireworks. They cannot wait one millisecond longer. This is actually my very first time in China seeing a lot of fireworks going off on New Year's. In any big city, these would be banned because you cannot have tons of people setting off fireworks in a city of millions of people. The air will be unbreathable. But this is a small town, so nobody cares. All right, let's go. Let's watch some fireworks. I spent the last day of 2023 in Fujian and I'm also spending the first day of 2024 here. What will I do with this precious day, you might be wondering? I'm gonna spend it on an island, wandering around in some random fishing villages. As you can see, there is a boat behind me and I'm about to get on this bad boy and travel 30 minutes out into the ocean to get to the island. So as you can see, we got some vegetables loaded on here, some other miscellaneous supplies in boxes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cargo is being unloaded and let's go explore this island. This is actually my first time visiting a place like this in China. I've been to Hainan before, but that's a massive island and it doesn't really have that cut off from the world kind of vibe. Nitotan Relics of the past.
It's not that no one fishes here anymore, it's just that wooden boats got phased out by metal ones so quickly that a lot of them are still sitting here. They're a little ratty, but still pretty intact, and poking around inside is like exploring a time capsule of the Fujian of 10 or 20 years ago, just like those houses we saw earlier. Things change so fast in China. This little street here is where you're going to find the most action on this whole island. Well, that ended quickly. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音
新年快乐,朋友们 Hello Catherine, what's your name? What's your name? Mandarin only gets you so far, guys. I have no idea what they are chanting. They're always singing. They're always singing. Today, 